guys, it's Elizabeth of ERWplans.com, Etsy store, ERWplans.etsy.com, Instagram, ERW underscore plans, and on Patreon, patreon.com slash ERWplans. Today we're doing two mini videos. Uh, this one is going to show you the difference between the academic, the annual, the undated, and the daily passion planner. Stick around for the other video, which will show you the difference between the dated and undated amplify planner. For the passion planner, we have, I have one of each here. This is last year's academic, um, and we're going to start with this one. Uh, I have a separate video where you can see the difference in sizes, but for right now, the we have a large academic that I'm going to show you, a medium in the dated, a medium undated, and the daily, which only comes in one size, which is the same as the small planner. So this is the academic. Uh, this was the 20 to 21 academic planner. Um, the first thing you'll notice, I have tabbed it out and it starts in August and ends in July. So if you go into, if you get an academic planner, first few pages are the same as the other planners, but you're going to notice your calendars span the same two years that the planner spans. This, span, this planner has 12 months, but they're in two different years because it follows an academic year calendar. As a contrast, this is the uh, 2021 annual planner, 2021, and same opening pages, but when you get in, it has the year 2021 and the 2022 calendar. This planner is going to start in January, just like you'd expect a planner to. This one is going to start in August. This is my August planner. I used it for business planning. so. As you can see, it, it starts in with like last year's August kit, in fact. Um, this one will go all the way through to December. Has an end of year reflection. It has the mid-year roadmap. And then it has the blank and the dot grid pages at the back. Similarly, this one will just go from August through September, through October, November, December, and then after December, you get your monthly reflection and your mid-year roadmap. And then it goes January through July. And then after July of 2021, you have your monthly reflection and your end of year reflection. And then blank pages and dot grid pages. So, and the layout is just like the annual. I'll grab, this is April of 2021 in the academic. This is April of 2021 in the um, annual. The, which sometimes you'll see online called the weekly. They'll say there's a passion planner weekly and a passion planner daily. Um, or they'll call it by the year, like this is the Passion Planner 2021. This is always going to be referred to as the academic. This is going to be the weekly or the 2021 weekly or the dated annual, however you want to put it. Um, so this is what April looks like. Starts on a Sunday. This is a Monday start. So you have that difference. Otherwise, it's, as you can see, the same layout. Just this is a medium, so it's smaller than the large. And it's the same kind of basic layout as the regular annual. Once you get past the calendar, you have you start with your weeks. You get between four to five weeks, depending on how Passion Planner lays out their calendar. I sometimes don't understand their thought process for how they decide which week is which. Um, for example, in uh, June of this year, 
or I should say May right now, uh, for the Sunday start, it starts on the 30th and the 31st. And then this week is considered the fifth week of May, even though it has more June days than May days. And if you have a Monday start like this one, week 22, it's this, and then week 23 has one day in May and all the rest are in June. And I have no idea why this is a fifth week of May instead of the first week of June and you gave, and you give June five. I, I don't know. I don't know what that is. I have no idea, but essentially you get a month, right? And then you'll get after your month, you'll get your weekly layouts. Then you'll get a reflection and then you'll get the next month. Uh, that is the same in the academic and the weekly. The only difference between the regular weekly, the dated weekly, the annual weekly, we'll call it the annual, and the academic weekly is that the academic weekly starts in August and runs through the following July. So again, it just to reiterate, this spans 12 months, but in two different calendar years because it starts August of the current calendar year and goes through July of the next calendar year. But otherwise, the layouts are still the same. You still go month, weeks, reflection, month. Okay, that's that's the only difference is academic starts August, ends July. The annual starts, the weekly annual starts in January, ends in December. For comparison, for comparison, this is an undated passion planner. These two are the same size. This is again, the 2021 dated weekly annual. This is the undated. Same opening pages. Passion planner roadmap. Everything is pretty much the same, except when you get to your calendars, they typically give you four calendars instead of two here. You get four because you can start this at any this count. This one can be started at any time. This one is dated for 2021. You can also redate for 2022 or whatever, but it's set up to start January 2021. In this case, this one set up to start whatever month you want. There are six weeks every single month for the annuals. There were six weeks in January if you had a Sunday start this year. So you can see the same number of weeks, same basic size blocks. But if you get to February, you have five weeks. So the blocks are a bit bigger. With this one, because it's meant to be for whatever month, whenever you want to start it, the it's always going to be six weeks. Just that's always going to have six weeks on the annual. The other big difference is the layout. Um, just to reiterate, this is the annual, the dated annual. It starts on um, January. You get in this case, five weeks. Then you get a reflection. Then you get February. In the undated, you have your first month. Remember, calendar, first month, reflection. Then you go to your second month and a reflection. And so on. Third month reflection, fourth month reflection. You get your 12 months, which is a double monthly spread and then a reflection spread. Okay. And then you have 12 weeks that any of your end of year comes at the end here. Okay. So month, 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 month. After six months, you have your mid-year roadmap. Month, 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 monthly reflection, end of year reflection. And then you just have 52 weeks of spreads continuously. 
So this is not divided up. You will notice that unlike the academic and the annual, these little tabs that show you where the months start don't exist on the weeklies. They exist on the weeklies here. Don't exist over here. And they exist on the months here, the monthly spreads. And they don't exist on the monthly spreads over here. So if you're tabbing these, you will need to either use uh, Chelsea's uh, tabs, which come with the little tab guide, or you will need to print off the tab guide from passionplanner.com. Otherwise, you got your undated, so you can put in whatever week number you want, whatever week start you want. Uh, you number these yourself. And then that runs through 52 weeks. And then you just have blank pages and the dot grid pages. So this one, you can start any time you want. This is great if you're not a consistent planner. If you have a habit of like skipping weeks because you've got nothing going on, um, or if you have, if you only want to plan for certain weeks, if you're going to use this as a travel journal, which I have a video coming up that will show you how to use a passion planner's travel journal so that you're only going to be filling this out when you're away from home, then this may be the right type of planner for you. Also, if your academic year doesn't start in August, if you're one of the schools that like go back at the end of July, or if you're international and you only have a six week break in the summer, and so you're going all through school all the way through June, and then you have like the end of June, beginning of July off, and then you're back at the end of July, this might be a better way to do that. Uh, because you, listen, you can start at any time, you can end at any time, and you don't have to do it continuously throughout the whole year. This could you could this could span two or even three years if you're not doing your weeks every week, if that makes sense for you. Um, I know some teachers really like the undated because they can just use it for when they're teaching classes. That way, when there's like spring break, when there's summer break, they, they can just skip those weeks and then just keep going. Also, um, I know some people like this one. If you want to make your year from your birthday forward, um, so example, my, my birthday, uh, I wanted to start in October. I could make this October and then make this first week in here, the first week of my, the week of my birthday in October. And then all the months would be like October, November, etc. And then this would be, you know, the next week after my birthday. So if that is how you want, if those are, you know, your planner styles, then this would probably be the best planner for you. Um, but if you're much more of a calendar year person, then I would go with either the annual or the academic, depending on when you want your start date to be. The other thing to consider is that you're either going to need to add a ribbon bookmark to this, which you can check out my video that shows you how to add a ribbon bookmark, or you're going to need to add two sets of tabs, a set to tab out your months and a set to tab out your weeks. Uh, of course, you could always just tab out the monthlies if you're using the monthlies and then use your ribbon bookmark for the weeks. Up to you. I have historically, when I use an undated, tabbed out the months and the weeks. So that is the undated. And Finally, we have the Passion Planner Daily. The daily is a completely different setup from the weeklies that I just showed you, whether you're looking at the undated weekly, the annual weekly, or the academic weekly. Um, this, there, this used to be even, have even more pages in the front. Uh, used to have like the little Hardo story that's now gone. Um, some more explanation of how to use the planner. Uh, now it's just got a few pages in the beginning. And then, you have wrote passion roadmap, your monthly game changer. This, I use as a future log. It's a one year quasi calendar. It's undated, so you can use it for almost any year that you want. Um, I use it as a future log to plan out my next year. And then you have your blank monthlies. It has six weeks, just like the undated. It's an undated monthly. It's laid out very similar to the undated monthly. 
there's just a slight difference of style because you can start this because it's a daily not a weekly planner you can start this whatever you want it doesn't have to there's no monday start there's no sunday start if you want to start this on a friday you can start it on a friday if you want to start it on a wednesday you can start it on a wednesday there there's no set week to start this on so it's a bit there's a bit more freedom on the monthlies uh much like the undated it goes empty month check in and then form your next month game changer next blank month check in game changer next blank month check in game changer next blank month check in game changer you get four blank months um one small passion roadmap and four game changers i still find it exceptionally weird that we have your overall roadmap here they don't give you that second like roadmap page like you get here i'll show you what i mean instead of doing passion roadmap create your first passion plan which would make way more sense to me you get passion roadmap your first month game changer goal then your annual calendar uh, future log however you're looking at this then your first month then a check-in and a game changer goal then your next month i don't understand why this is separated by this future log if i was making this planner i would put the future log then i'd put passion roadmap in the goal so that it would just be the same thing but that's a quirk of the daily once you get through your four months and your four game changer goals and your four check-ins you get your last check-in your fourth monthly check-in and then you get a since you started this planner quarterly check-in then it's right on to the daily pages uh, daily pages are set up with a timeline here set up with your game changer goal your personal to do's work to do's free space to grow some little fill in the blanks here your mood today i learned best thing to happen self-maintenance and then there's a space of infinite possibility that is an entire page you can check out in my instagram you can check out other instagrams to see how people are using this page um you can use it for additional to do's if uh 13 to do's are not enough in the day uh, there is a suggestion list in the front how to use your free space to grow what to use for your space of infinite possibility um, I've seen people do daily drawings. If you're doing Inktober, this is a great way to do an ink drawing every single day. But you end up with um, 92, 93. You end up with 93 of these spreads, okay? Which works out to be 200 and something pages. Double spreads, okay? And then you have, I think it's 12 dot grid pages in the back and just like all the rest of them, the back pockets. You have less, you have no blank blank pages. You just have these dot grids in the back. Uh, it's another one where if you're gonna tab it out, you might want two sets of tabs, one for the first four months and the next for the dailies um, to show where your months start and stop or add a second ribbon. The much like the undated, the daily is really great if you're not going to be consistently planning every day because you can start and stop it whenever. If there's a particular day where you have a lot to do, you can go into your daily, fill out your daily for it. And then if there's other days where you don't have a lot to do or you're on vacation and you're not gonna plan, you don't have to skip a bunch of pages and leave a bunch of pages blank. You can just, this is let's say June 15th and then you go on vacation for a week come back and then you can just like pick it up on June 22nd um, there so you don't lose a lot of pages I've seen people who use one of these as a full half year um, and you can cut you know that you can get these as a download and add in two more pages check out my video on how to add full-size pages to a passion planner uh, you can also glue them into the back here or you can just, if you're that type of person that just wants to ignore the monthlies, you can ignore the monthlies altogether. Um, but this, like I said, this is a completely different beast from 
all the other ones because this gives you the most freedom and the most space. Um, my recommendation is if you have a lot of different tasks to do and you find yourself needing to both time track and task track and you want to combine it with like journaling, this is the one for you. If you need freedom to skip a week or two or to start whenever you want, go with the undated. If you're more of a January through December type person, that's how your calendar runs, go with the annual. And then if you're a teacher or a student, I would go with the academic. Um, also, if you wanted to do more, if you're, if you're born in August and you want to do an annual starting with your birthday, get that one as well. So that is the difference between the academic, the The, the other big difference that I may have mentioned before is that the, the daily only comes in this one size, which is the small A5 size. The academic, the annual weekly, and the undated weekly all come in all three sizes, large, medium, small. So it also depends on how much do you want to carry this with you every day. The daily is designed to go with you everywhere, every day. These. I would say that the large is really a desk calendar and these I have fit a medium into a handbag I fit my medium into several handbags uh, but at the end of the day it's it's le definitely less portable than a small or a daily and that is a comparison of all four types of passion planners as always thank you guys so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please make sure to leave a like leave a comment and share the video. We go live every Wednesday, 7 a.m. Mountain Time. However, sometimes life happens, so if you wanna be notified every time a new video goes up, please make sure to subscribe to the channel. Uh, as always, um, as a note, there is no sponsored content in these videos. Everything comes out of pocket. So if you like the videos and you'd like to cont support continued videos, please make sure to become a patron at patreon.com slash ERW plans. Once again, thank you guys so much for watching and stick around for the next video.